I want to take this moment to share something very personal with you. Over the past year and a half, I've been doing some healing and self-reflective work. And through this work, I've had the revelation that I identify as non-binary. With that said, I'll officially be changing my pronouns to they, them. It's still, it's a work in progress and, and I, I'm working on it too. Hey guys, and welcome back to Exposing SMG. Today we're talking about Demi Lovato, who just came out as non-binary and currently identifies as they, them. I'm going to refer to Demi with those pronouns and I hope it's not confusing to any of you guys. As of recently, Demi has been in the news a lot and what people are saying about them isn't that great. It seems like the general public is fed up with Demi, especially after the Froyo fiasco, which I covered in a previous video. So check that out if you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm convinced that the whole story was me being on an acid trip from how much disbelief I was in. So if you guys have been following up with my channel or blog, you know that I often cover Demi because I am very fond of their artistry and story. I find Demi very interesting and their story is definitely one for the books. But, like most of Demi's fans out there, a lot of us are disappointed, or at the very least, very concerned about Demi's recent behavior. In this video, I'm going to take you through three concerns that fans have about Demi Lovato. If you want to go the extra mile and read some things I have to say about Demi that isn't so pleasant, then I'm going to link you to my blog post down below where I call Demi out in a way that YouTube probably won't enjoy. I say it with love. Without further ado, here are three concerns that fans have about Demi Lovato. Number one, morphing into everyone they hang out with. Demi has this ability to reinvent themselves every era, and while that is great for an artist so they can keep the world interested, sometimes it does more harm than good because it kind of shows that Demi doesn't even know who they are. Demi's style and taste in music is easily influenced by who they're hanging out with at the time. For example, when Demi first came out of rehab, they started dating Henry Levy. We're going to skip over the part where Demi started dating right after rehab and just talk about who they were while dating Henry. Demi and Henry had the same style and they adopted the same mannerisms. You can see for yourself by the photos. Now, if you're just coming by this, you're probably like, um, okay, that's nothing special. Yeah, no, you gotta let the examples marinate. Next up, we have Austin Wilson, whom Demi dated for a period of time after rehab as well. The photos are self-explanatory. Austin was this edgy, tattooed rock star, and that's the persona that Demi adopted. When Demi was with that homeless man, Max Erich, they adopted his casual and trendy look. I also remember when Demi's singing style changed during that time. I don't know how to describe it, but Demi started singing in a nasally way, as if they had a clogged nose, and that's because that was Max's unfortunate technique. I don't want to get too off topic, but Max really had Demi wrapped around his finger. And in this bubble of delusion to the point where he was out here tweeting about going on a world tour and releasing an album, and Demi was publicly supporting his obvious clout chasing tendencies. All I'm saying is, Demi gives off the vibe that they're easy to prey on, which results in people taking advantage of that. I got engaged to a dude and was like okay maybe this is maybe this is it you know and I, it still didn't feel right and I knew when things didn't work out I knew why it didn't feel right it's because I wasn't being myself nowadays Denny is hanging out with Alok Vaid Minan who also identifies as they them Demi featured Alok on the first episode of their podcast, which is when they also came out. Due to Demi's track record with morphing into the person they spend five minutes with, many people are saying that Demi only came out as non-binary because of Alok. Look, I'm not here to take away from how anyone identifies, so I'm not even going to touch upon that topic. I do think it's a valid concern, but because it deals with gender identity, it can be a touchy subject for people and I'm not trying to offend anyone. However, Demi is searching and plowing the road and climbing Mount fucking Everest looking for a purpose in life, a chance at rebirthing, but Demi will never find it because they're looking for something that doesn't exist. 
it's the same concept of destination happiness. In the podcast, Alok talks about how Demi came up to them at their show and said, Oh my gosh, is being non-binary when you are healed? Is that not a red flag for anyone else? Are you identifying as non-binary because that's what you truly believe you are? Or are you identifying as non-binary because that's what you think will heal you? <laughs> and then you came up to me afterwards and you said, Oh my gosh, is being non-binary when you are healed? And I remember being like so surprised. From that video, all I see is an extremely vulnerable person who is desperately searching for happiness externally because they can't find it from within. And to each their own. I'm not here to talk about gender fluidity because people can identify however they want and I'll respect that. But on the topic of Demi, we're talking about how they morph into everyone around them. As you can see from these photos, Demi has already morphed into a Alok. The point of this rant is to say that Demi is easily persuaded, and I'm not talking about coming out as non-binary, I'm talking about everything. So this Alok person was posting about how gender reveals are transphobic, and what did Demi do? Go and talk about how gender reveal parties are transphobic. I'm pretty sure that transphobia is much more than hosting a party revealing the scientific sex of a baby but to each their own. I find Alok highly problematic ever since they called little girls kinky. Yes, little girls, kinky. You know this is the problem with our current culture. In an effort to progress forward, you can't just say shit like that because you are literally sexualizing others in the process and that opens up a completely different topic. Here's exactly what Alok said. These days, the narrative is that transgender people will come into bathrooms and abuse little girls. The supposed purity of the victims has remained stagnant. There are no princesses. Little girls are also kinky. Your kids aren't as straight and narrow as you think. Huh? Little girls are kinky? Demi shouldn't shove random things down everyone's throat without fact-checking who the hell they're hanging out with. I don't know, let me know what you guys think about this and if I'm being too dramatic. Going back to what the original point of this part of the video was, Demi morphs into who they hang out with which is dangerous in itself because if self-discovery is something that you're looking for, well you're not going to find it in other people. Adopting everyone's traits and mindlessly being fed what people are telling you is not you finding yourself. And just to be clear, I'm not talking about Demi coming out. This goes for everything, from hanging out with Henry to singing like Tone Duff Max to praising problematic Alok. Number two, posting every thought they have on Instagram. I used to praise Demi for spilling the tea, but now I'm here to tell them to be quiet. There isn't one thought that passes by Demi's mind where they don't feel the need to Instagram about it. You know how people are usually advised not to discuss something when they're angry because emotional reaction clouds our ability to make wise judgments? The same theory applies here, and it could be applied to anyone watching this video. Demi is a very emotional person just like we all are, but Demi puts themselves as a target for hate because every bypassing thought is Instagrammed, and at the end, it will make them look like a hypocrite. Demi went on a whole rant about how they won't use a specific filter that changes your facial features and paints you in the light that society wants or whatever the hell. That was in March. Guess what? It's May and Demi still continue to use these types of filters. I can't even count how many times I've watched their story and they would use those same filters they're complaining about. So that's what baffles me. Stop preaching things every two minutes. Nobody is telling you to not use the filter, but you just seem like a hypocrite. And to be honest, you're the one confusing everyone by preaching about something, then continuing to do it, but still being upset with the topic of choice. A perfect example is Demi's weight. Demi constantly talks about how harmful it is for people to make comments about weight or whatnot, but who's constantly updating us on their weight? It's not me, it's not E! News, it's not Jeff down the street or Monica on Facebook, it's Demi. In March, they posted a video showcasing their weight loss and how proud they are of themselves for not restricting themselves or counting calories. 
People were livid at Dunny because everyone revisited that video after the Froyo fiasco and were like, well, aren't you contradicting yourself here? Then Demi went to post literally a few days ago in May a whole rant about not complimenting someone's weight or bringing it up. Demi wrote, I don't know who needs to hear this, but complimenting someone on their weight loss can be as harmful as complimenting someone on their weight gain in regards to talking to someone in recovery from an ED. If you don't know someone's history with food, please don't comment on their body. Because even if your intention is pure, it might leave that person awake at 2am overthinking that statement. Does it feel great? Yeah, sometimes. But only to the loud ass ED voice inside my head that says, see? People like a thinner you, or if you eat less, you'll lose even more weight. But it can also sometimes suck because then I start thinking, well damn, what they think of my body before? Moral of the story, I am more than the shell from my soul that is my body, and every day I fight to remind myself of that. So I am asking you to please not remind me that is all people see of me sometimes. <sighs> They're not wrong. The statement is 100% valid. But once again, Demi contradicts the behavior that they preach. I always preach about how Demi has good intentions regardless of her problematic past. I'm always like, well, they mean well. But intentions don't really mean anything if you're doing more harm than good. Demi themselves says, even if your intention is pure, it might leave that person awake at 2 a.m. overthinking that statement. Take your own advice, Demi. One can argue that your I lost weight without counting calories statement was triggering to someone in recovery because they're not losing weight while counting calories like you are. Do you see what I just did there? I just pulled a Demi at the Froyo shop scenario. And if I haven't already said this, the world isn't responsible for your triggers. One of the main things that people learn in ED recovery is that the world isn't responsible for your triggers. People go to therapy to work through their triggers, not to yell at the world for not abiding by them. I'm saying all of this because I think that Demi's hypocritical behavior is harming them more than anyone else, so hopefully Demi learns to take the time to process things as opposed to using their Instagram with over 100 million followers as a diary. Your recovery isn't supposed to be documented for every single person and neither do your bypassing thoughts. Number 3. Being stuck in a victim mentality. Lastly, I want to talk about the toxic cycle of being stuck in a victim mentality. You know, Selena Gomez once said that it's dangerous to stay in a victim mentality. And Selena is the queen of being a victim, but even she can call it out for what it is. I sympathize with Demi because they've been through so much, like, so much. No one deserves to go through any of that, let alone the extreme lengths that they went through. However, I can 100% see how someone can go through what Demi goes through and how that leads them to start adopting an extremely negative mentality of, the world's against me, nothing ever works for me, I am a victim, and so on. I firsthand suffered from this. I can stub my toe on a table and have a meltdown about how the world's against me, but who am I harming at the end of the day? Myself. And that's Demi. I believe that because they went through so much, and the world joined together to express how much gratitude they have for Demi sharing their story in the documentary and through their music, it built this victimizing ego for Demi which put her at a high and that's how they came at the frozen yogurt shop. Unprovoked, may I add. So that concludes my rant. I know I have a lot of Demi fans that read my blog and watch my videos, but from what I've seen, most of us agree on these concerns. It's important to be able to hold a celebrity accountable, because how else are they going to learn? And Demi has a lot of learning to do. If it wasn't for her fans making sure that Max's conniving history went viral, Demi would have never seen him for his true colors. It's time that we try to help Demi find their own true colors and that aren't embedded in someone else. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you have any other concerns to raise with Demi? Do you disagree with anything I said? I'm really curious to read what you all have to say. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and comment for more and subscribe for new videos every week. And as always, I'll see you next time.